All right, we've gone over the steps to recover from a stall. If you remember, the most important one is to reduce the angle of attack. That by itself will recover from a stall, but in order to lose as little altitude as possible, you also want to add throttle, maintain coordination with the rudder, and eventually raise the landing gear and flaps. Then in the last lesson, we talked about how airspeed relates to the critical angle of attack. Now with a higher airspeed, you need a lower critical angle of attack in order for lift to equal weight. And at a low airspeed, you need a high critical angle of attack for lift to equal weight. And if your airspeed gets too slow, then even the critical angle of attack won't be enough for lift to equal weight and the airplane will start descending. If you try to pitch up past that point, you're going to stop. And the speed that that happens at is the stall speed. Today we're going to list the factors that affect the stall speed that could change it. So those factors are weight, load factor, and flaps, and let's get started. So stall speed is the speed where at the maximum angle of attack lift equals weight, then obviously your stall speed is going to depend on weight. So the heavier your aircraft is, the faster your stall speed is going to be for the same airplane. Aircraft manufacturers calculate that stall speed at the maximum allowable takeoff weight, and they give you two sets of numbers that they put on the airspeed indicator, which I'm showing here. At the bottom of the green arc, at about 48 nautical miles per hour, that is the stall speed at the flaps up with the maximum allowable takeoff weight. Now, if you extend the flaps, you're changing the shape of the wing which allows it to make more lift at any given speed. And so you don't need that critical angle of attack till you get to your slower speed. And so the bottom of the white arc there is the speed that would require your critical angle of attack with the flaps down. And with the flaps down, if you go any below that speed, you're going to stall. That's all assuming that you're at your maximum allowable takeoff weight. But because you burn fuel, you're almost always below your maximum allowable takeoff weight. So normally with flaps up, you're going to stall just a little bit slower than the bottom of the green arc. And with your flaps down, you'll stall just a little bit slower than the bottom of the white arc, assuming that you're trying to hold the airplane level and increasing your angle of attack to make up for airspeed. If you're not trying to hold the airplane level, though, if you're either accelerating up or accelerating down, that's going to change something called the load factor and changing the load factor is going to change the stall speed. So first we need to define what load factor is. It is the ratio between the lift that the wings are creating and the weight of the airplane. So if they're equal, you're at one G and you feel like your normal weight. But if you've ever been in a car or on a roller coaster, where you're going downhill and then it rapidly goes to level and you feel heavy, you feel everything pulled down. If you were to put a scale underneath you, it would actually show that you weighed more. Um, same thing if you're riding a bike and you go around a corner quickly. You still have your weight that pulls down, but the bike accelerating to turn you around the corner adds more force on you going sideways. And so the two forces combined would make a G-force. If you had a tiny scale on your handlebars and something on there, it would show an increase in weight. You can also have the opposite. If you ever going over the top of a hill quickly in a car or on a roller coaster and, and you feel, almost feels like your stomach rises and everything feels light, that's uh, less than 1G. You can even get negative Gs where things will fly up. And that's where your wings are creating less lift than you have weight. So if your wings are creating more lift than you have weight, that means you're going to stall at a higher speed than you otherwise would because for your wing to generate that level of lift at any given speed, it's going to need a higher angle of attack. This video shows a little bit of how that works, and the same thing can happen in a steep turn as well where the wings are generating both a lot of sideways turning force, but they still have to generate upward lift. Starting out. The airplane was going fast, and inertia was holding it on its path. The g-force that the airplane felt was the result of the elevator trying to pull the airplane off that path. As the pilot pulled harder and harder on the yoke, the g-load increased. To carry the extra load from the g-forces, the wings had to generate more lift, which meant that the angle of attack had to increase. 
But because of the starting speed and the fact that the airplane was in a dive, the airspeed stayed high. As the angle of attack increased, the direction that the aircraft was actually traveling started to diverge from the direction the nose was pointed, like a skidding car. Finally, the pilot pulled the yoke back even further, and boom, the wing reached the critical angle of attack, a long way above 1G stalling speed. We call this an accelerated stall. Even though the airspeed was high, the wing simply could not produce enough lift to carry all the extra weight from the increased G loads. The wing had plenty of airspeed, but because they were trying to ask it to create way more lift than what it weighed, it still resulted in a stalling angle of attack. And it's worth pointing out that the opposite can happen as well. If you're, say, in a rapid climb, as you level off and start a descent, you can have negative g-forces where your wing's creating less lift than you have weight. And in that case, it would be at a lower angle of attack than it would otherwise be at that given speed. And so you can get well below your stall speed for a given weight if you're pulling less than 1G. In fact, you can get all the way down to no airspeed at all and no lift at all without stalling if you have zero Gs, if you're not creating any lift from your wing at all because you have whatever the zero lift angle of attack is. And a zero load factor or zero G forces is of course how they're able to make this movie. The pilots are reducing their angle of attack until they get zero lift. And that means the airplane is basically falling along with everything in it. But if you're falling along with the airplane, you feel completely weightless. And you see in portions like this, they have weight again, and that's because the pilots are having to pitch back up to gain altitude so they can do it again. And this clip will show you how. The plane climbs to 24,000 feet, in our case over the Gulf of Mexico, and goes into a series of parabolic arcs. The aircraft climbs at an extreme angle, 45 degrees. It feels like 1.8 Gs, nearly pinning passengers to the floor. And then at 34,000 feet, it begins to dive at an equally extreme angle for half a minute. At that moment, passengers experience weightlessness. And then they do it again, and again, and again, and well, there's a reason this plane is known as the Vomit Comet. Actually, less than 4% of our participants get sick. It's very rare. So this is what it looks like from outside the airplane. You can do this in small airplanes as well. The problem in a small airplane, though, is that it's the gravity that brings the fuel from the wings to the engine. So if you do it for too long, your engine will quit. And I have had that happen, but as soon as you stop doing it, gravity returns and your engine will start back up again. I surprised a friend doing this once without telling him and scared him pretty badly. When the airplane is weightless, it could slow down all the way to zero without stalling. And in the bottom part of those curves that it's flying, it would stall at a significantly higher speed than normal because in order to come out of that dive and start a climb again, the airplane has to generate a lot more lift than it does flying straight and level, which means it needs a higher angle of attack which means it needs to be closer to that critical angle of attack. So to review, lowering flaps, lowering weight, or lowering load factor, all lower your stalling speed, and raising the flaps, raising the weight, or raising the load factor, all raise stalling speed.